I recently gave a workshop for gardeners at the University of Guelph Arboretum. It was on pests, diseases, and weeds. It's quite long, so I split it in half. Let me show you how I deal with weeds in the garden. So when is a weed a problem? New gardeners think that every weed has to be pulled and weeds are a big problem and they're trying to find some simple solution for controlling them. Uh, there really isn't one. Gardening is all about having weeds. You're going to have weeds. What I do is I look at the weed. It's not important that I can name the weed, but what is important to me is that I can tell you how it grows. And if I understand how it grows, I can decide how important is it to control this weed. Is it one I care about or do I just let it go? So here's the kind of things I'm looking for. You have to know what the root looks like. It's the root that causes you a problem with most weeds. The other issue with weeds is, of course, that they flower and seed. One of the reasons a lot of weeds are actually weeds is because they make lots of seed. If we can keep these plants from flowering and from making seeds, we've controlled a big part of the problem. Some people like to cultivate their soil. That's not a good thing to do. Our soil is full of old weed seeds. So things that have dropped 10 years ago, 50 years ago, those seeds are sitting in the soil and they're waiting to get to the surface where they get some light. And so when we cultivate, we're bringing all these old seeds to the surface so they can grow. People think that they're cultivating to get rid of weeds, but they're actually creating more weeds than they had before. As a general rule, the best thing you can do for weeds is to mulch. And I keep all my soil covered with mulch. In the ornamental garden, it's wood chips. In the vegetable garden, it's straw. And if I keep the soil covered, I really don't have too much of a weed problem. All right, so let's understand these roots. So here's some kind of weed. As I said, it's not important that you can identify them, but you can look at the roots. And this is what we call a fibrous root system. And it's pretty common on most plants. You've got these white roots coming down and then they get finer and finer and they kind of look like little tree branches. Sure, this is a weed. You may not want it in your garden, but it's not gonna travel too far. It's not gonna spread a lot. This is a well-behaved root system. And if I know a weed is like this, I'm not that concerned about it. Then you have this. This is called a stolen root. So you see these weeds going up from it and then you see this horizontal stem that's usually only a couple inches below the surface of the soil. And this stolen, this horizontal stem will grow sideways and make a new shoot. And it grows sideways and makes a new shoot. And it travels and it spreads very quickly. Whenever I see this kind of a root system, I go after this weed right away. I want to get rid of this because if I leave it, I'm going to have dozens and hundreds of these plants. The other thing that happens with a lot of these stolons is if, if that horizontal stem gets broken or cut, it doesn't kill the plant because each one of these vertical growths starts making its own roots and so it'll just survive. So if you cultivate this, you actually just create hundreds of weed plants from one plant. If we look at the roots and you see a lot of white stiff roots and they're growing sideways, that's a sign of a spready plant. A root system like that will grow sideways and then up again and sideways and up again. Now, most plants do that. Even our perennials in our garden do that. But the important question you have to ask is how quickly does it do that and how far does it go? Okay, so something like a bearded iris, it does it too, but it only goes a couple inches from its mother plant and then you get one growth, right? So you don't get a lot of growth and it's close to the mother plant. It's not going to spread everywhere. On the other hand, some of these grasses, they'll grow quite far from the mother plant and they grow in all directions. So you know that this one weed is going to create a dozen new plants. The other type of weed I really don't like is things with tap roots. So here the classic one is the dandelion. The problem with tap roots are that there's a lot of energy stored in there. There's a lot of plant food stored in there. And unless you dig out the whole root, it may just regrow. So if we take the dandelion as the example and you cut the top off, you know, all the leaves are gone and you leave the root in the soil, you'll just regrow. 
on a dandelion, if you go down about three inches and you cut it there, so I'm three inches below the level of the soil now and I cut it there, it probably won't regrow. That lower part is thinner and doesn't have quite enough energy to get to the surface and start to grow. I have some perennials in my garden, like the yucca plant, for instance, which I, I really love, but it has a horrible taproot. It's next to impossible to dig it out. So what I've learned is I, I never let my yucca plants go to seed. Because if they do, I'll have hundreds of these things that I have to dig out. And it's not a fun job. Anything with a taproot is at the top of the list. It has to be taken care of right away. Uh, here is a favorite weed of everybody. Field bindweed. It's a beautiful plant. has nice leaves, kind of arrow shape. Flowers themselves are nice white. It is a vine, so it spreads a lot. And it's actually a very pretty flower. The problem with field bindweed is that it travels a long distance underground. Now, I've seen some crazy numbers. I don't know how true they are, but I've seen numbers like, you know, 30 feet underground before it comes up again. Now, I know it can travel quite far. I don't know if it'll make 30 feet. It also grows down quite deep. So it's filling that soil with a root structure. I once had a mulch pile. It was six feet tall, and these guys were coming up through it and growing on top of it. So it had no problem going six feet vertical just so it gets some sun. This is a nasty plant. It's really hard to get rid of. Uh, now, there are some herbicides out there available in the U.S. None of them are available in Canada for controlling this weed. The best thing you can do here is never let it grow any leaves. What I do in my garden, I identify and I know where it is. I come along every week and just dig out whatever I see. Any green, I dig it out as soon as possible. I'm trying to starve that root system because for a root system that's underground to start making leaves, it has to convert some of the root energy, some of the root food into leaves so it can start to grow. And if I keep chopping that off and it's not able to photosynthesize new food, eventually I'll get rid of it. Uh, but this is a tough, tough weed. Never let it get a hold in the garden. You have to go after it right away. Here's another one that's uh, really terrible, and it's called the Canada thistle. And by the way, this is not a Canadian native plant. Pretty sure it comes from Europe. I know it's not native to here. So some thistles are okay, although they almost all seed around a lot. So if you see any kind of thistly type of leaves, and it's not your garden plant, it's probably best to remove it right away. But Canada thistle is one of the worst thistles. The problem is really the root system. So here's a, the way that uh, biologists study these plants. They actually create these wooden crates and then they grow the plant and then the lady here in the picture is spraying the soil off the roots so they can really see the root structure and see how these plants grow. And this guy makes deep roots. They go horizontal. They grow in all directions. Any tiny piece of root will form a new plant. It's a vicious, vicious plant to get rid of. Uh, you either need to use herbicides or you have to go after it diligently and cut it down every time you see any green growth. Uh, even mulch is not going to stop these last two weeds that we talked about. They'll just grow right through it. So bindweed, covering it with two or three inches of mulch, that really doesn't work. Uh, Canna thistle, uh, it'll grow through a foot of mulch with no problem whatsoever. Now both of these need lots of sun. And so one way to control them is to grow lots of plants. If they can't come up and see enough sun, then they will die out. You rarely find either one of these weeds in a shady area. They're always out in the sunny area. And so that maybe is one way to try and control them. So what's important with weeds is identify the category of weed. You know, what does its root system look like? How bad does it spread? If it's one of these that is really bad, you got to go after it right away. Don't let it get started. If it's one that has a nice root system, it doesn't really spread too much, then control the seeds. Don't let it flower. And if you leave it there, that's fine. I have quite a few weeds in my garden and I barely even pull them because they're not going to do a lot of damage. They're not very competitive with the plants in my garden, so I just leave them alone. Uh, purslane is one. 
Purslane is kind of a rock gardeny plant. It's only a couple inches tall, kind of grows sideways. If you don't go after it, you'll have it everywhere. But it's so small that any larger plant overgrows it. So it's really not a problem. And as a lot of people online say, you can actually eat it and it's kind of tasty. Here's another weed that we really need to identify. This is garlic mustard and it's everywhere. It gets into the woodland areas. It does something called allelopathic chemicals that produces those and puts them in the soil. And those prevent other plants from growing. And so it overshadows our native plants. It grows quite thick. This is what it looks like in its second year of growth. So this is actually a biannual. First year it makes a little rosette that's close to the ground and doesn't really look like the adult plant. The second year it grows a tall stem and a flower and then makes a lot of seed. Around here in southern Ontario you find this everywhere in the woodlands now. It's taking over. I, I don't know if we'll ever control this plant but certainly if it's in your garden go after it right away. Now there is a bit of a myth on this plant too. People say when you do collect it, put it in a garbage bag and throw it out because the seeds will develop even after you pull the plant. And so last year I went through a little experiment where I pulled it at different stages of growth and just laid it on the ground to see if in fact the seed would develop doesn't really do that. Later on in the season, when some seed is already forming on the plant and new flowers are still opening, if you take it then, it will form some seeds. But if you go through your garden early on and you pull them just as it's starting to flower and you throw those on the ground, those plants are dead. Remember, they're biannual. And that's why I come back to this idea, understand the biology of the plants. You know it's biannual. You don't have to dig out its root system because it's going to die anyways. It's a biannual. So they're not as hard to control as a lot of the information online makes it out to be. But if they're in a natural area where there's no one controlling it, it spreads like crazy. Uh, this is a picture of the plant a little older. So now we have lots of flowers on it. We also have some seed heads on it. One last weed to talk about, the lily of the valley. Now, lots of people love this plant for their garden. Beautiful flowers, nice fragrance, nice leaves. So my mother gave me some of these and I knew they were a little weedy. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go put them in my sugar bush. Quite shady in there, they're not gonna really do much. Sure enough, they did just fine in there and they started spreading. So I threw them out. I have a six acre property and every year I find some somewhere hidden under some tree, some clump that's starting to grow. These things go everywhere. I'm not quite sure how the seed is spreading, but some animal must be moving this seed around or maybe it's birds. Uh, once a plant starts, it just spreads and the clump gets larger and larger. This is one of these horticultural plants that everybody loves that we should not be selling. It shouldn't be in anybody's garden. It's far too vigorous. And again, the problem with it is that once it gets out into our native wild areas, it will take over and it's a ground cover that just covers everything and we lose all our native flowers. Don't grow this plant, get rid of it. And even getting rid of it in your garden is a task. Although you can dig it out, the root system's not that tough to get at. You just have to be really diligent for a year or two and you'll get rid of it. That's a lot of information about weeds, but I think it's really important for gardeners to really understand the plants that they're dealing with. And one of the best ways to do that is to have a look at my book, Plant Science for Gardeners. It describes how plants grow, and it has three different chapters on propagating plants. Once you understand how plants really grow, you'll be able to make the right decisions in the garden. If you want to learn more about weeds, I have this video here about landscape fabric. People keep telling you to put it down to stop the weeds. That's mostly a myth. Have a look at the video. And if you want to have less weeds in your garden, mulch is the key. And this video here will tell you everything you need to know. Happy gardening.